Hey Lakeview Church, today is Thursday, December 10th, 2020, and I get to do the Advent video devotional with you this week. So I thought we could just reflect on uh, one of my favorite Christmas carols, Hark the Herald Angels Sing. This Christmas carol was written in 1739 by Charles Wesley, and it was later adapted in 1754 by George Whitfield. Um, it's a very long, enduring, and old, and one of the most favorite Christmas carols that people sing. Now, most people know the first verse by heart. A lot of people know the second verse. Some people know the third verse, but some people didn't realize that there is a fourth verse. In fact, most hymnals don't print the fourth verse, and I had to scour the hymnal uh, shelf in my office to find one that does have the fourth verse printed. So let's just read through the lyrics of this and then we'll stop and reflect a little bit on that fourth verse. Hark the herald angels sing, glory to the newborn king, peace on earth and mercy mild, God and sinners reconciled. Joyful all ye nations rise, join the triumph of the skies. With angelic hosts proclaim, Christ is born in Bethlehem. Verse 2, Christ by highest heaven adored, Christ the everlasting Lord. Late in time behold him come, offspring of a virgin's womb. Veiled in flesh the Godhead see, hail the incarnate deity. Pleased as man with men to dwell, Jesus our Emmanuel. Verse 3, Hail the heaven-born Prince of Peace, hail the Son of Righteousness. Light and life to all he brings, risen with healing in his wings. Mild he lays his glory by, born that man no more may die. Born to raise the sons of earth, born to give them second birth. And then we come to verse 4. This one is less familiar to most people. Come, desire of nations, come. Fix in us thy humble home. Rise, the woman's conquering seed, Bruise in us the serpent's head. We just talked about that Sunday. Adam's likeness now efface. Stamp thine image in its place. Second Adam from above. Reinstate us in thy love. If you were listening carefully, you probably picked up on some allusions or echoes or hyperlinks to the story of God's rescue plan from Genesis all the way through Revelation. Um, a lot of the Christmas carols have these hyperlinks, these echoes or these allusions to uh, the gospel and uh, themes from scripture very skillfully woven into uh, their verses and choruses. I think that's one reason why uh, the Christmas carols in particular have endured for so long and are, are so well loved. And sometime it would be really interesting to sit down uh, maybe in a devotional or a quiet time and, and take a Christmas carol and just work through all the lyrics. Do some Google searching and, and write down all of the scriptural allusions and references and echoes and hyperlinks uh, to God's redemption plan from Genesis to Revelation. I think we'd be surprised at just how theologically rich a lot of these songs are. Uh, so let's look at some of that stuff from verse 4 of Hark the Herald Angels, particularly the end where he says, Adam's likeness now efface, stamp thine image in its place. Second Adam from above, reinstate us in thy love. What is he talking about, this second Adam? Who is that? Um, what does it mean to have Adam's likeness effaced and, and having an image stamped? Well, all of this is an echo or allusion from 1 Corinthians chapter 15, Starting with verse 45, it says, So also it is written, The first man, Adam, became a living person. The last Adam, now it's referring to Christ as the last Adam or the second Adam. The last Adam became a life-giving spirit. The first man is from the earth made of dust. The second man, Jesus, is from heaven. Like the one made of dust, so too are those made of dust. And like the one made from heaven, so too are those who are heavenly. <laughs> and just as we have borne the image of the man of dust, let us also bear the image of the man of heaven. What the Apostle Paul is talking about there in 1 Corinthians 15 is, look, there is the first man, the first Adam. 
and he is made from the dust and he became a living person. And we, as Adam's descendants, are made in Adam's likeness. We also come from the dust, and just as Adam failed, he sinned, and he is destined for death. God said, from dust you were created, and to dust you shall return. So those of us who are from Adam, uh, are we have his nature corrupted by sin. We are from the dust. We are sinners. We've fallen short of the glory of God. We are destined for death. To dust we will return. That's where we're standing in Adam's likeness. But there was a second Adam, not from the dust, but from the heavenly realms, Jesus, the Son of God who stepped into our world. And the second Adam succeeded where the first Adam failed. The second Adam accomplished what the first Adam could not do. (laughs) And and so what Paul is talking about is, is as we've borne the image of the first Adam, so let us now bear the image of the second Adam. As we have walked in death and sin, so now let us walk in life and righteousness. That's what Charles Wesley was getting at when he wrote the fourth verse to Hark the Herald Angels. Uh, Take Adam's likeness and efface it or erase it from us and stamp the image of Christ on our hearts and our lives in its place. No longer are we walking around in death, destined to return to the dust. Now we are walking in everlasting life, destined for resurrection and an eternal inheritance. That's what he's talking about. The second Adam, from above, through his death and resurrection, has reinstated us into God's never-ending love. That's what Hark the Herald Angels is talking about. That's the whole Christmas story. That's the essence of the gospel. And it's not just in Hark the Herald. It's in lots of the Christmas carols and the the hymns that we sing, both old and modern, the old songs, the new songs, they are loaded with these allusions and echoes and references to scripture. So I would encourage you to pick your favorite Christmas carol, do a little Google searching, and find all of its hyperlinks to God's redemptive plan. Have a great day. We'll see you Sunday.